Last time on Dice Fall and Everyone Dies. An 11 definitely confirms that there has been some activity because you know that the footsteps that have been in and out through the vault that y'all were, ju were just exploring uh, were actually leading in and out of this tunnel that was here. You realize that there is a little hole in your pack now. Someone has chewed their way out. While y'all were distracted clearing the vault, you believe that someone... I would have just recently checked on her. Right. It's been ten minutes while you were waiting for Wimble. And I rolled really high for Luna's stealth check. Oh no! <laughs> Coming out from the hall, rounding the corner, you see what appeared to be two frog-like humanoids. Oh my... Those are the fuckers that t collapse the tunnel on us. It is made of an unusual leather. Aww. I knew it. <laughs> what kind of leather, Chris? From what you can tell, Elvish? Oh! oh. I knew it. <laughs> when she realizes it, she's gonna like yank her hand back up. Oh my god! Welcome back to Dice Fall and Everyone Dies. I'm your GM, Chris, and today let us talk about math. No, wait, wait, don't hit the pause button just yet. We're talking useful math. See, this is the math where we talk about slaying of monsters. It's good math. Now, you may have noticed in our podcast that you'll hear moments where our players are adding up their bonuses to see if their actions affect that small selection of monsters that they decided not to make friends with. And fans of podcasts from other systems may notice that those numbers of a party of third-level adventurers tends to seem a little high. Well, there's a reason for that, and this is where our math comes in. And it all stems from a very early problem in the D20-based games. See, this problem was introduced in the original system. You see, players were forced into a type of gear treadmill, where treasure always needed to be something that was generally worn or made sure to increase numbers or types of bonuses so that players could continuously feel powerful. And as more and more content was released for this original system, natural power creep became a very significant issue. And it ended up being that you needed to have like four to eight different types of bonuses that mattered to add to each of your die rolls, and it slowed down combat and became really cumbersome. And on top of that, you also found that using lower level monsters became functionally irrelevant after just a few levels. And it's mostly because of all of those increased values. And when you looked at the content, it forced a lot of reskinning of lower level material by just adding bigger numbers. And really players and content suffered as a result. So let us take a look briefly at the core solution of D&D 5th edition and let's also take a look and see what Pathfinder 2nd Edition did differently. Now, one of D&D 5th Edition's big defining features is this concept called bounded accuracy. Now, there is a ton of nuance in this idea. But at a high level, this concept is about keeping the numbers that are applied to dice rolls small and keeping those results within a bounded numerical value. And so, when numbers do increase, they are assigned to a small selection of mechanics, while the dice rolls are typically used as the tactical rewards. Now, the effect of applying this concept to that math, it makes it fairly simple and quick, but players tend to lose out on certain forms of theory crafting. See, the lower complexity becomes easy to learn and easy to master, but it ends up lacking mechanical depth that some players desire. So at the end of the day, the nature of the game changes, and its audience changes. So for D&D 5e, once you understand the ideas around proficiency and advantage, you take a huge leap in mastering that system. Pathfinder 2nd Edition, though, likes larger numbers, and it likes stacking bonus types. Paizo has this tradition of giving a plethora of options to its players, and then letting them, you know, scratch and itch towards different types of builds, retooling, and maximizing character abilities. That idea, though, gets tempered by the desire to have a system that's easier to learn than what 1st edition was, 
but they also don't want to force a gear treadmill. Their ingenious solution was to build in character power directly into their proficiency system and then break the link between monster and player stat design. You see, players and monsters are no longer built the same way in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Their mechanical underpinnings are now different. And so when they come into conflict with each other, the nature of the conflict becomes more important than pure battle statistics. So like how bounded accuracy shifted the style of the game and targeted a new player base, Pathfinder 2nd Edition does the same, but it's using a different interpretation of power and growth in its mechanics. You see, bounded accuracy and proficiency scaling, as I like to call it, are both real excellent solutions to the original D20 problem. And when you hear our party calling out numbers, and you need a quick way to kind of interpret the effectiveness between these kinds of systems, you can use this quick shorthand. So let's use Taffy as an example. If Taffy rolls a 25 on her spell attack to hit while she's level 3, a good way to convert that into a bounded accuracy model is to take her final number and subtract her level from it. And so in this case, it would be roughly about 22. Now, if you happen to be listening to, let's say, a D&D podcast and you want to convert those into Pathfinder 2nd Edition numbers, you can use an example of, let's say, someone rolls a 15 and they happen to be level 5. Well, that would be about the equivalent of rolling a 20 in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Now, these are estimates because Pathfinder has a few more effects that shift the values a little bit, especially when you start working with conditions, but this works as a pretty good shorthand for both types of games. Because you see, we here at Dicefall, we love Pathfinder 2nd Edition as a rule set, but we have mad respect for all the creativity that comes from the tabletop community as a whole, no matter what system is being used. In fact, Sid can't wait to jump into a 5e game as a warlock, and I have been informed that I am destined to break the masquerade if we ever get an opportunity to play Vampire the Masquerade. I swear they have no faith in me. But, you know, maybe we should try some of these systems as bonus content. Now, let us know in the comments if you think this is a good idea, and please leave a rating on our iTunes and Podchaser pages. Doing so really helps our podcast reach more folks who may need to hear a story to listen to. And don't forget, we have a giveaway going now as well. This is the last week of it. So be sure to follow us on our social media channels to enter, as well as share and tag folks who you know would like to have a, a fun shot, some awesome content, as well as enter the giveaway. The drawing is going to be on February 5th, so this is coming up super soon. Also, if I remember correctly, Deimos was just about to open a door... And we all know what happens when this party opens a door. I'm hoping for more spikes. <laughs> Deimos doesn't believe it's trapped, even though we can believe it's trapped. I'm going to cast false life on myself, granting myself 10 extra HP. And okay. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm open the door. All right. As you open the door, you see a once fine seating made from mahogany and there's velvet that's been broken into pieces and seems to have been used to fashion crude shelters to the north side of the room there's a door that seems to be heavily barricaded with debris but in addition among the broken furniture you see what appear to be two small-sized creatures of simian nature that take notice as you open the door and then just to the south you also see another frog humanoid. Everyone give me perception checks for initiative. 26. Um, 28. 21. 25. Dang, some good rolls this time. Mm-hmm. That depends Demo said on what 26. Alec rolled. True. Huh? Demo said a 26? Yes. And Taffy was 21? Mm-hmm. Let's see what they get when they roll. Alrighty. So it looks like we're going to start off this with Stano. So you have the two simian creatures that are to the northern side of the room. And then you have the uh, amphibious humanoid, the boggard, to the southern side of the room. So we know the boggard is aggressive. Do the simians look aggressive? They look surprised to start off with, but they are baring their fangs. 
Okay, so she's got her sword out. Yep. Um, she's gonna go up to the first monkey, and she's gonna she's gonna power attack. Wait, the monkey? A uh, simian monkey. Why not the That's frog a... person? Because they're too far away. How far away the frog person? They are both within one action of movement. Okay. Stana will attack the boggard first, then, <laughs> since Taffy seems concerned. <laughs> Taffy's like, forget Sid. the monkeys, get the toad. Sid got to make friends. <laughs> I don't know. The Maybe hell am I adding to that? Oh, there it is. Uh, 28. So you march over, your footsteps clanging, your sword raised, and you begin your slice into the very unprepared boggard and critically hit it. Dang. Your sword slices through for how much damage? Hang on. 37 points Jesus. of damage. That's huh. 28 just ba- or 29 just baseline. That's what she ro- or they rolled, plus the... So, your sword comes in fully across the chest, striking it from shoulder through its diaphragm down to its hip. You take it down into a full bloodied state, and it drops to its knees, trying to hold its insides in. (laughs) And it is barely holding on. That's a good hit. Thank you. Demos. Uh, uh, So you just saw Steno basically walk up and give no two shits and just drop this thing with a massive strike. She likes small creatures, not medium creatures. Uh, Let's do the guidance inspire courage and shield. Who are you guidancing? Uh, Who's next in the... You believe Bread will be going next. Bread. Master Kazalin. Okay. Master Kazalin. Okay, so the, the toad is done. Right. The, no, toad the toad is, is still the toad is, alive. Is alive, but is severely wounded. Okay. Can I move up behind it? Yes. Okay. Do that. Um. And then just twin strike, I guess. Okay. Same time. Do anything else. So with your axe and your sword, you twin strike it. Unleash, unleash your d20s. Are you striking with your axe or your sword first? Uh, that'll be the axe first. Okay. Bring your axe is going to come down. For a hit of 24. Nice. 24 hits, but does not critical. Don't think we need to critical to kill this thing at this point. So go ahead and roll your damage. Are his, like, frog intestines poking out and stuff? Oh, totes are. Hell yeah. I just finished the running man for, like, the fourth time. <laughs> uh, that'll be five. So you bring your axe down into the back of its head. You can hear the skull crack as the metal sinks into the flesh. The hands go limp. And then it just falls forward and it splays out. The guts begin finally coming out of the wound that Steno dealt to it. Its armor is essentially sundered at this point, having been the equivalent of paper. And then the two simians seeing this begin reacting and like just unleashing this monkey screech. <laughs> Scared the cat. Okay, uh, I'm going to use my remaining action um, to tell them to stand down. Give me a diplomacy check. What language do you use? The universal language of putting my hands up and being like... "Mm." Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Nope. I got a a five with no bonuses on that one. I do not have any diplomacy. You don't have diplomacy? You know what? I'm not surprised at that, actually. Never (laughs) mind. That was sort of a Take back that. Yeah. You're just like, what the... What's wrong with you? You're holding froggy legs. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> That's worse. That's the last thing that Boggard saw was Bray coming at it with two legs of its companions on his <laughs> Oh, no. That's when he knew he was dying. <laughs> we look like fucking serial killers. <laughs> oh, God. Whose turn is it? It is now Alex's turn. Uh, with his sword drawn, he moves in and up to the two simians. He glances over towards the other fallen foe, is momentarily aghast as he looks and sees the how quickly it was dispatched. I suppose more provisions, Master Kazalin, and he makes an attack on uh, no. one of the simians. Kazalin does not like killing things unnecessarily, especially animals. I mean, he's a He's a ranger, after all, so... Only if they're attacking him, then he's okay with it. And he's like, Shut up, you infernal simians! Ooh. And he takes his sword, and he 
cracks one against the side of the head for eight points of damage. To knock it unconscious? Oh, it was lethal damage. Mm. But it did not fall the simian, but it looked like it hurt it pretty hard. It got domed in the head by the back back side of that blade. Taffy. Stop! Um, in the name of my So, game. <laughs> Taffy's gonna be like, We're, we don't want to kill all of you. We don't want to kill anybody, really. But this dude's friends that look just like him just attacked us. So, it's kind of a natural reaction. Can we be friends? What do you say that in? Uh, languages do I know? I just go with common. Who knows what monkeys speak? Would I know what... Mwangi? I don't have Mwangi, unfortunately. I have a sorry. What's that? Is that like the regional language? Uh, sorry. Uh, I'm gonna try it in... Isari first. Assyriani? No, Isari. I-S-A-R-I-E. Oh, Iskari. Iskari, that's the one. Yeah. Okay, note. Roll the diplomacy. Oh, fuck me dice. That's not too bad. That's, uh, 19. They seem too freaked out to listen to you. They have prepared in their hands, each with a whip and a sickle. Are they wearing, um, cultist outfits? They absolutely are. Oh, oh they're oh. cultists. In that case... Turned out they're not all frogs. God damn it. I wish I was, hadn't used that. Just animal yet. things. You got one action left, left Taffy. I have two. Well, you moved up and then... No, I didn't. I'm oh, in the Oh, so doorway. you tried doing it at, at range. Okay. So you have two actions left. Blast those fuckers. By looking at them, can I tell if they're alive, like, alive alive? The simian creatures? Like, if they're undead. You would need to expend an action to... I am not doing that. ...to find out more information. From where I'm standing, from in mm-hmm. the doorway... Is there a clear 30-foot line for me to the simians? To one of them, yes. Alex in front of the other. Well, that's a waste of a line spell, then. Um... I have a feeling these things are not going to be very hard. Freeze them. Yeah. So if, if you want to hold your actions and let the, the punchers, and then but at least you won't waste a spell on easy things. I was going to use a, a ray of frost, then, because it's a cantrip, and oh. it's not a yeah. wasted spell. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna cast Ray of Frost on the one that Alec is not in front of. So the cold begins shooting out from your fingers in a direct line. That's 18 plus my thing, which is 8. So 26. Is that a critical? 26 does not crit, but it does hit. Oh, wait. No. Because you did. Yeah. Inspire Courage. Inspire Courage. So that's plus 1 or plus 2? Plus 1. 1. So 27? Still hits, does not crit. Ah, oh, darn it. Okay. 3. Four, five, six, seven. Seven points of damage? Yep. You've put a layer of frost across its fur, and it is definitely unhappy. But it is now their turn, and they each go into a shrieking frenzy, filling the room with a massive amount of monkey shrieking as they begin bouncing up and down in their spots and unleash a flurry of sickle attacks down okay. on I thought that was a Alec. Alec. So many sickle attacks. How many sickle attacks? Each one, because of their frenzy, is going to be unleashing three different sickle attacks down on Alec. So a rain of sickles are just slash, slash, slash. Would you say they're one. falling on his head? Well, they sure ain't raindrops yet. That's for sure. So the first two blows from each are unsuccessful, bouncing off part of the armor. But then one catches in right underneath part of the arm, and the sickle point catches right up in, dealing to Alec six points of damage. Mm. And then another series of blows come down, but their last strikes are just not quite effective enough. And it seems as though they have, because of this frenzy, enough energy enabled into them that each one is going to bolt for a different door. Now, the problem that comes in is you see both of them look towards the northern door that appears to be heavily barricaded, and then they instantly choose to move through Alex's threatened squares and one through Dano's threatened square (laughs) to try to get away. 
Oh, yes. Alec takes his attack of opportunity and is able to hit. What does Stano do? Uh, Stano naturally 20 is an attack of opportunity on it. Oh my, that's a critical. All right, Stano. How much damage you got going? Well, you know what, Stano? She's always doing a lot. And yes, that is a critical card, isn't it? It is a natural 20 critical that's card. Red. 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 Yes. Gred. Gred. <laughs> Greg. It's Greg. So first of all, uh, the target is fatigued. Okay. If it survives. How much damage? 16. So the first one, the one going towards the eastward door. Wait, wait. Sorry. Sorry. 17. 17. So Alec catches that one in the gut, slicing up through its armor, and it crumples over and falls onto its back. Oh, it falls over dead. And then the one that is trying to dart past Stano gets its head fully severed as it's walking by, and it's its body just lands into the door and then falls back over backwards. Ah, sweet Ah, blessed ah. silence. Gnarly. And they were kind of cute in a weird monkey way. Taffy's going to loot the room. (laughs) So give me perception checks. That's 17. Got a 23. 15. 26. 23 as well. So as y'all begin looking around, you can tell this appears to be an antechamber for the Order of the Nail Lictor in its former days. Uh, Hmm. It looks like it was likely used by the Bramble Bashers at some point, but it's obvious that between the Simeons and the Boggard, that not only was their living arrangements, which were likely already not the best, fully destroyed, but the Hell Knight setup is highly destroyed. There is, it looks a bit like a monkey cage inside of this room at this point. Can I use nature to find out what those monkeys were? You can. Tell me, Sestagram, who was the lictor whenever they left this uh, citadel? (laughs) You get such bad checks on things. Knowledge checks. I did the worst on the knowledge checks. I don't know why. (laughs) Never mind. What was it? Roll a two. It'll give me an eight. It'll give you an eight? Yeah, that's that's definitely not enough but to know that uh, these are likely from the Mwangi Expanse as well. And when Stano asks Alec, Alec, he looks and ponders for a few moments, and he tries to recall knowledge uh-huh. on who the, the lictor was. I believe he's retired now, but if I remember correctly, it was lictor Sebastian. Interesting. He was always a quirky man, prone to, he'd always call it fun conjectures of his own. It made his sentencing both loved and feared while we were here. So tell me, now that you have your family's ring, will you be aspiring to become Lictor? You are an armature, correct? I was an armature, yes. Was? Yes. I, um, now that I have acquired my ring, I can attain my correct title of Mayor Lictor. What's that mean? That sounds fancy. Actually, would Taffy know, given that she's a Hell Knight historian, what that Give me a society check. (laughs) (laughs) That is a natural 20. Uh, 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 that is with the skill. That is a 29. Alec bends over as he spots something shiny and lifts up a a vial and he hands it over to you. A Merlichter is an officer. I don't quite lead men. My position could only be would only be fully recognized once I was able to fully support my ascension into the officerhood. So I was right. You were sent here to achieve something in order to claim your inheritance. If I didn't want to spend another ten years as a grunt, yes. You may have noticed my family is a bit storied in the Order of the Nail. Hmm. It is quite a bit to live up to. Can Stano do a quick society check uh-huh. to see how high up the Stagram family is yeah, in comparison it. to her own? Sure. 25. The biggest part you know about the Stagram line is that they are well achieved in the Order of the Nail. 
various points along the nail's history they're either artists or leaders they have quite a few storied accolades to the Stogrim name. While they only approach the level of at best minor nobility, that is only because the line is heavily married to the Order of the Nail. If you had seen these, this level of accomplishment in a family outside of the mercenary orders of the Hell Knights, they could have easily achieved count level status. Cool! You do know that when the Order of the Nail moved up to Varicia into the Corvosan era, area, that the Stogrim line had to move up there with it following the Order of the Nail, which is part of what leaves all of the mementos from this area, the books, the paintings, and the other unkept left aspects of Stogrim achievements in and of themselves a travesty. So Stata looks distinctly uncomfortable for a moment and just kind of moves away to check the uh, the barricade in front of the door. Give me a perception check. And Taffy, give me an arcana check. Uh, 26. <clears throat> 23. Wait, uh, 24. So you realize that the vial that was handed to you is an elixir of lesser comprehension. And Stano... You hear the sound of rummaging and chewing on the opposite side of that door. How oh, gross. Does it sound like an animal? Give me a nature check. I can do that now. <laughs> no, I can't. That was a seven. Um, can I hear that noise too? Your perception was high enough, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to make whatever's making that noise my hunted prey. And then that will give me... Some bonuses to identify what that is. Um, you begin tuning your senses towards what's on the other side of the door. Give me a nature check. That's a 20. You're pretty sure that that's a large grizzly bear on the other side of that door. The hell? That's surprisingly mundane. A large grizzly bear is on the other side of that door. Oh, so this is not just a grizzly bear that's big. This is a large, large grizzly bear. Grizzly bear. Gotcha. Or a dire bear. I don't think we want to go this way, guys. <laughs> is Kaslin going to share this with us? Yeah. I do! You see... That I want to make another friend! That this is barricaded against this barricaded. door. Barricaded? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> fully barricaded. There must be grizzly in there. Oh. Barricaded. That was unbearable. I already made that pun. I guess we're going to have to grin and bear it, guys. Now, y'all would have to take a little bit of time to dismantle this barricade. I'm good. This is not a good idea. <laughs> no. no. But we'll need to clear out the bear friend. in order to put the goblins in. Also, they may have barricaded the bear in there. Also, also is it bear meat really good? Yes. But I thought you wanted to make friends with it, Taffy. <laughs> I know. I was trying to. Are you trying to manipulate me? <laughs> a little bit. Because it's working. <laughs> bear meat is quite greasy and requires extra spicing. Well, it's like you know, it's Slow barricaded in there right now. We can always come back later. It that, sounds like it's got something yummy to eat. That is true. Does it look like that barricade will hold for a little bit, Chris? Give me a craft check. I can do that. <laughs> no, I can't. That's a nine. You're pretty sure it was hastily put together, and that if something begins trying to test that door from the other side, it might be able to catch you unaware. This bear is going to come out and eat us. Can I light the door on fire? Why? Wait. I'm I not have, saying no. I have two vials of arsenic. Can I can I put some of that arsenic in one of my <gasps> frog legs and feed it to this bear? You could attempt to do so, but you'd have to undo or, the uh, Or, the and hear me out, trap first. what if we poisoned one of the bodies and left it where it was very easy to see? I mean, we've got three fresh bodies. We could pile them all together and pour the arsenic into it. It's true. I just don't know that... if it's going to be concentrated enough in amongst three. Yeah. It's got to be a high concentration, so whenever it eats it, it's like... And That's arsenic's a big not like bear. an instant poison either, is it? It's like a slow-dose kind of poison. I don't know how, her, how arsenic works in this game, really. I think it's pretty fast. You can give me a, uh, we'll say, a knowledge nature. 20. You know that 20. arsenic 16. takes about a 10-minute onset time. So it could have time to come and fuck us up before 
true. <laughs> um, Consider. Same plan. Lock the doors. Camp out in the war room. We'll hear when it comes. Will we hear when, the, when it comes to the barricade? <laughs> Would hope so. Depends on how forceful it is. I mean, it's a Does fucking it bear. That the door would open in or out. The door opens into where y'all are at. So it opens that's out. Why, yeah. Okay. That's why the apparatus that's set up there to hold the door closed is as effective as it is. Aren't you a ranger? Can't you make friends with it? It's a bear. You could try. Mm. <laughs> Wouldn't you ride it into battle? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you have handle animal? I don't. I have command animal, but that's just a basic skill check. That actually sounds terrifying. Somebody riding, like, especially <laughs> Caslin riding it on the bear. I, it's, it's worth a, great a shot. Bear. Motherland. We ride the bears in the motherland. Wrong that's, game. That's, that was, that was, I was attempting to be <laughs> Russian <laughs> in that situation. That was, was very so Scottish. Scottish. <laughs> Vant, I should make you feel loaf. Yeah. <laughs> So what do y'all want to do about the bear? Uh, Grin and bear it. <laughs> we have polar views. So what's the plan? This is a grizzly plan. Oh my god! Do we have the honey up. pot? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not very black and white. Yeah, Just keep you playing even... peekaboo with it. Ew. Ew. <laughs> Smelly. Well. Consider. We take down the barricade. We don't open the door. We take down the barricade. Quietly. Quietly. We So it'd mostly be the two of you. Because <laughs> Stato's in half plate. Oh, yeah. I cast Mage Hand and start very... Gen- hang, on, hang, on, hang on! Hang on! Hang on! Hang <laughs> So, we take apart the barricade. We poison the leg. We drag the other bodies out of here so it only has the option to eat the leg, right? Yeah. And then we wait. So after we've cleared out the barricade, we go into the two separate rooms... You two go on the other side. Two of two of us will go on one side of the hall, and the other two will stay in the little five foot space. Oh, there's five of us. Whatever. Taffy's just using my chain to start clearing the rubble. Okay. Um, and then when we hear the bear out and we hear it eating, we'll attack. Or we could just let the poison do its work, and then we attack. That too. I think we may. Let's add a add a small detail to that plan. Is we s- quietly very quietly try to open the door just a little bit. Just a little bit. like a And hair, then run. And then sneak away. Okay. <laughs> okay, sounds good. So okay. Stano's gonna start moving so, the bodies. Okay. okay. While they're doing this, and Taffy's just been mage-handing everything out of the way. Out of the okay. door. Let's, can we get some more blood and Stato's, on this? Stano's gonna move the leg. bodies. because Dip this leg in some blood, make it super appetizing. So there's a door to the south, technically, yep. that goes into the main hallway. That's where she's going to start moving the bodies towards. Okay. So that she can just so kind of... Dragging, from... especially the the bloody, uh, boggered body, just streaking the blood. The So the Taffy is pulling pieces with the mage hand away. Um, While they're arguing, like, Taffy's And it's mostly like, the man. small debris so that y'all are going to be able to, like, stand and actually pull the barricade parts down. So y'all have the body set up. Which body are you going to hit with the dose of arsenic? The leg, the right? One of the legs. One of the legs. One of Brad's legs. Okay. Well, one of Brad's frog legs. <laughs> <laughs> what about what, the frog we just killed? I mean, you could use one of its legs. Or one of the monkeys. I mean, whatever. whatever. We'll use the closest monkey. We'll put the arsenic in the closest monkey. Okay. So Stato's only moving two bodies outside of the hall. Okay. And then she's going to close the door. All right. And y'all are going to hang out in the bedroom or down in the main hall? No, just in those two little hallways to the side. Okay. So y'all are going to open the door or the eastward door that heads out of this room? I ain't about that this... way. Yes. Stano's going to do that. All right. Ooh. It should be another five foot hall, right? It is another five foot hall. Brilliant. Give me a perception check. Oh, fuck. 17. Taffy's going to put two doors between her and the bear. <laughs> Chris is flipping pages, and I do not feel comfortable anymore. So much for that plan. In the room that is now behind you, you believe you hear the chattering of more of those simian creatures. Fuck. No, they weren't too easy to dispatch, so or too hard to dispatch. Okay, Stano's gonna cl- Stano's gonna walk back out of that five foot hallway. She's gonna close the door gently. Gently. Okay. <laughs> I have to remind you every time just to try to be quiet. <laughs> 
I'm trying to do everything as gently and quietly as possible. All of us are going to cram into the other five foot hallway. Give me Taffy a stealth. Taffy is going to put them and the doors between her and the bear. So the she's stealth? going stealth, yep. through the five foot hallway and out into the other room and then closing the door behind her. Look what you have a three of. What's that stealth check? That looks like a token that needs to go to Medvic. It's what that looks like. The thing is, Stato is never going to roll a good stealth, y'all. Thank you, Stato. Bringing back one of my... Get pieces. fucked, Medvic. <gasps> Be careful what happens with that die roll now, my dear. Twelve. It's double what it was last time. <laughs> Taffy's in one of the side rooms. Bread, where are you putting yourself? Well, I still need to, to do the work of opening the door slightly. Oh, yeah. So, Give me a stealth on that. Because this is going to be happening simultaneously to Stano realizing that there's something in the other room. And Demos, what are you going to be Actually, up to? Actually, can I leave Wimble above the door that the bear's about to come out? You can. Wimble can get a nice little hiding spot there. Give me a stealth. Uh, 25. Demos Excellent. thinks this is all nuts and is staying out of the way. <laughs> With uh, Taffy or down on the hall? Um, Probably the hall where he can't get Holy it. shit, Mold. he's got a high stealth. Um, Tiny creatures can hide quite well. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Excellent. Kazalin opens up the door just a little bit, and as you look into that room, let me tell you what you see. The bear room? Body. Yes. I was planning on <laughs> stopping and as sightseeing. You, sightseeing. <laughs> as you open it up, this stately bedroom looks like a horrific crime scene. Sprawled haphazardly everywhere are half mauled humanoid bodies lying in pools of blood and splintered <sighs> furniture, as well as bed <sighs> curtains, and there are rugs tor- torn to shreds, and there are massive piles of dung. Ugh. Hang Give on. me a quick survival check. Is it possible that Wimble, being an extension of Taffy and being smart and clever and tricksy, could potentially open that side hallway door? that Stano heard the noise from as like a out for the bear. Let the bear out on the monkeys? I yes. I love that idea. That is a good idea. What was I rolling again? <laughs> Survival. Uh, 13. I'm gonna have Wimble do that. Alright, so Wimble flies over to the center chamber. So he's already in the center <laughs> chamber. To the in-between chamber between the doors. Yep, and he's gonna crack the door. To the center. So that'll be just a moment. Okay. So, Kaslin, you can tell that pretty quickly that this bear has been in here for a while. Um, the bodies that are there appear to be relatively fresh, but they are severely mauled, and they've been eaten on for some time. And you see the bear itself is gnawing on one of the thigh bones presently, but it has not yet caught sight of you. Oh, good. Well, I'm going to sneak away. Okay, and you've already rolled your check for that, mm-hmm. which was high as all get out, and so it did definitely uh, got through its perception DC. So it does not see you. You are very sure of that. So has Alec moved with us, or is he just standing in the middle of the <laughs> hallway like a statue? So Alec is actually shadowing Taffy at this point. Oh, because... he's with me in the other room. Correct. And it's mostly because if a bear is going to come running down, the rest of y'all can run much faster than your gnome. <laughs> Aww. Stato's move speed is 20, guys. So, like... But you also have armor. a lot of noise doing it. <laughs> she does. <laughs> My lady, if you make a hasty retreat, you are still covered in splint and plate mail. This one is in a peasant's gown. <laughs> <sighs> when you see the robes that I have brought with me and bought, you will know. Taffy, we will stop at the haberdashery as soon as we leave this Thank place. you, because my wardrobe is in ruins. I'm I'm sure what is the name of the man who runs the haberdashery? Uh Dash. <laughs> <laughs> no. Haber Dash. <laughs> Winthrop Finney. I'm sure Mr. Finney will be most pleased to assist you with your wear. Yeah. Hmm. Where's Wimble? Segue into Wimble opening the door and flying away with a twenty five stealth. Taffy, did you lose your familiar? Is that the other door opening? So Wimble opens the door. Brad is sneaking away just as he sees the door crack just a little bit as he's moving by. And Wimble dashes to... Flies. Uh, well, flying dashes to uh, 
and Kazlin sees this Kaslin. flutter of wings and this pixie sweat leave a, a fast little trail as it zips by. So is Kazlin coming no, back he, to... Wimble is going to land on Kazlin's shoulder this little hallway. to go with him. Hmm? So Kazlin's coming back to this little hallway that we're all crammed in, right? No, he's going to go all the way back to the... He's going to go... There's no space there. I'm going to go here and be on the other side of this door. Kay. Okay. Okay. So back into the room where y'all Drop checked the other out. Monkeys. So he he's actually going down the hall a bit. Where Sano so, brought the frogs. Okay. Frogs, yeah. yeah, yeah. So is anyone going to observe the room directly, or are y'all going to leave it all to auditory? Is there a keyhole you can look through? There is not. You could leave the door open yeah. a crack. Oh. No, close it. Close the door. Nope. Auditory. Uh, auditory. So Wimble is going to fly all the way down to the floor and look underneath the door into the room. So, so you can describe this to me. <laughs> Wimble will tell me about it later. <laughs> Does Wimble have dark vision? Yes. Okay. So after a few moments, the doors have opened. Y'all have the doors closed on your side. Mm-hmm. Y'all hear the, the kind of grunting coming from the bear. And then it just smashes down finally the doors. It finally puts its weight. And now that it is entirely undone because of y'all's removal of the barricade, the door slams open and even partially comes off its hinges as the bear now senses its own chance at freedom. And you see the the feet kind of shuffle as it begins kind of moving towards the center of the room. It It begins sniffing the side of the air. And then it kind of looks forward. As though it's looking towards the the door that Wimble went down into. Is it not going to touch the leg? But then it catches an ear of something to its right towards where the leg is at. And it looks towards the east, towards the open doors. And then all of a sudden you see what appears to essentially be this dark flying spot fly across and hit the bear into the side of the head. And then it turns and it charges down the east door and you begin hearing this growling and mauling happening. You see and hear the cackle of the simians as they begin trying to hear the sounds of battle going back and forth. It's going to kill the fuck out of those things. (laughs) And you hear their... (laughs) Just this... This thud... Wimble can't see anything anymore at this point. Everyone give me perception checks. Oof, I don't perceive Uh, shit. 24. 17. 16. I'm worried about Wimble, so I have my head, like, looking around the room for him. Y'all hear a swipe and a thud, and then a loud crack. It sounds like Jaws splitting a skull. Oh, God. Well, we fed him. Oh, but he might go down the hall towards the city. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Hmm. I'm assuming Kaslin will be able to tell if there's a bear coming towards him. Well, no, because the other room might have a hallway, too, yeah, I think, he's right? In yeah, he's in the, yeah. That's it, one where the monkeys were. Right, he's yeah, in that room. Yeah, he's in that room. The bear. Eating, oh, the bear. The bear, okay. yeah, is in that room eating the monkeys. We got to... This has got to play out as they're attacking and fighting each other. Guys, we've been playing Pathfinder together for a long time. Like, over a year now. And I feel like this truly may technically be the most cowardly thing we've ever done as a group. I would like to think that this is the most clever thing we've done (laughs) in a while. I mean, setting a wild animal on other crazy cultists. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty fucking (laughs) smart, I think. Not that it's my plan or anything. Well, that part, what is your plan? I know. <laughs> you completely bypassed my plan. Sorry. But it just seemed like two birds, one stone kind of thing. Yes, but if the bear would have eaten the arsenic, then he could still be doing this while slowly dying of arsenic poisoning. Well, let's say he's not slowly dying that's, from whatever they're doing that's to That's true. They are probably hitting him at least a little bit. Oh, good. Maybe they'll knock him unconscious. We can save him and he'll be our friend. He won't know if we had anything to do with it. Or <laughs> we'll lie to him forever. Or it's a bear, so like. So we'll get close to him. He'll sideswipe us in the face. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh oh. Okay. DM. Okay. Chris. Uh. We good? Y'all hear another swipe and crunch. The sound of what was likely a trio of the simian creatures is now down to the scared, sad, cackling of one of them. Sad cackling. 
<laughs> Said Jesus Christ never again. And then you hear this feral roar from the bear as even then finally that goes. But then you'll hear what sounds like another door slamming open. <gasps> Fuck. From further down. But so this one even more muffled from its distance. Oh, it went into the other room. It went in this way instead of... And then you'll hear this metagaming. terrifying croak go out and this charm. The sound of battle now. continues. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, we gotta make it an honorary member of the team. Pip and Zarf. And then kill it. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. No, okay. He's not in that hallway, though. Pib and Zarf are, so this is going, uh, well, y'all don't know exactly where it's going, but you know it's not gone into any of the areas where y'all are at. Okay. Okay, but Kazalid is technically in the hall. The Does he, area. you don't see Pib and, he doesn't see Pib and Zarf though, Pib right? Pib and Zarf are in the uh, main hall, that where the tertiary halls branch off of. Cool beans. Okay. So, so this is just going hall. deeper so into the So this hall area. here. The spine hall. The spine. Yes, the spine hall is where Kathy's Pippin's gonna shoot down this hall and um, back into them to come you to have her. To, yeah, well, no, people while this can't is see happening, the screen. I'm gonna move into the main hall and try to reconnoiter with with the team. Okay, and can you grab? Yeah, you know, group. Okay, and Wimble's gonna follow. And y'all hear this terrifying croaking come out. Grab the cobalt, please, while you come through. I I tell them to be safe. quiet. As the sounds of battle continue. And in this case, y'all hear now a wet slop as something also hits the floor. And this, one of the sources of the croaking ceases. Damn, this bear is really taking him out. Hopefully they're doing some damage. I'm kind of hoping not, actually. I want this bear to go back into the wild. So this bear has a 19 AC. Holy crap. Fuck. It has 45 hit points. Nice. Fuck. It's stronger than me. It does 2d8 plus in damage when it hits on some of its strikes, and it is slowly working its way through. It's not looking pretty, just so y'all have an idea. And so the sounds of battle are somewhat slower at this point. They might just all kill each other. Yeah, that <laughs> the might cultists work might out. kill the bear. Yeah, I mean, if it's bleeding at some point. But you know. the bear is going to kill like a bajillion cultists. Don't worry. Said, there were no other options here. This bear was not going to be our friend. It is a wild bear. It will murder us. Kazlin was not going to ride him gloriously into battle with his long hair flowing in the wind. It was. I just actually have going no idea how long Kazlin's hair is. <laughs> well, he has been in prison. Yeah, but he could have gotten a haircut since then. <laughs> I'm sure there are prison barbers. Not, no, no I mean not. since he left. He's just in a freaking jail cell, ground, yeah. Much. And after about another. 20 seconds or so, the sound of battle seems to subside. Who do you all think won? I think the bear did, kind of. Should we go find? Wimble has told me, by the way, the whole plan. By the oh, time Kaslin has regrouped back. with us, hasn't yeah. he? Mm -hmm. Oh, good, you're not dead. No. Wimble tells everybody the plan <laughs> that he did. I was very concerned. I okay, should we go down the hall and find out what's going on down there? We should move up behind the bear. Whatever's I'm going on, we can probably take it better. I'm certain you don't want me to leave that. No, I will. All right, so you're going to move into the chamber that the bear entered into or into the chamber y'all defeated the monkeys in? That, that would I be the chamber we defeated the monkeys in. And then, and then the through that. Doors so we don't make any noise. Try to, to, right. to open doors. Try to and trace going, where the bear went. And who's going with Kaslin? I'll go. Uh, Stano will follow after them at half speed so she makes less noise. And Alec will mimic that as well because he is also not hyper stealthy. And I'm assuming Deimos is going to come with us too. Black, 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 black. <laughs> that grab means the, the, the leg. The arsenic leg? Yeah. All right. So Kaslin, Kaslin, give me please a remember stealth. you cannot you cannot eat that. But you can use it as bait for some other monster. It will taste like almonds, but you cannot eat that. Give me a stealth. All of us? Uh, Kaslin. 27. So you begin moving up into the room. You can see both of the doors have been slammed to the right. And as you look into the room to the east from the antechamber that you're in, you see that, like this one, there are pieces of furniture still intact there. But 
hanging from the ceiling and rafters in the center of the room appears to have been a strange structure made of ripped and knotted curtains. Hanging from one of the structures is the body of one of the simians. One of them is on the floor, its head crushed as though it has been partially devoured. As you look through and you begin kind of moving and poking your head in, you see that there is a, another door at a bit of a candy corner, but to the north, and another door to the east. The door to the north has been splintered open. Let's go in there. And through that one, you see that that, that chamber it has a steady dripping from the stone ceiling and is a ruined bedroom, and it seems as though a deep bog-like puddle is in the middle of a broken floor there. Oh. And ringing that puddle are splintered pieces of wood stuck into the flagstones and rubble rising up a bit like a bizarre set of foliage. 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 And then in there you see appears to be two more boggered bodies. One, its head crushed, the other, its gut split open. And on the far side, you see a very bloody grizzly bear taking a drink from the pool. Okay. This is all in character, what I'm about to say. Okay. I'm going to stand at the door. I'm going to shoot it twice and then move out. Uh, Alec and Stano, stand by the door. When the bear comes in, attack, attack it. Masterful. And then, and then uh, Taffy, you stay by me and, and shoot it with your magic. Demos, okay. you stay to the side. Yep. None of us to the have far an corner. ability to make mm-hmm. friends with Where animals. you can still buff. Taffy, we're killing the bear. Okay. Please come to terms with that. We have a bugbear upstairs, we have goblins, and we have kobolds. And warg puppies. Surely. I scratched Luna's head. Surely you are content. The bear's head perks up. No, that's not what, no. You have a chance to do your strikes. We take position. Take position now. And then. I get position. Should we roll off? Should we roll for initiative? Y'all are going to get a surprise on it. Okay. Cool. Okay. Come on, Brad. Okay. Uh. Poor bear. Uh, 20 on the uh, the short bow. Wait, no. 22. 22 hits. Uh, 1d6 on that one. Uh, 3. It's still up. And then natural 20 on the second. Yes! All right. Roll, pull your critical card and roll your damage. Remember, as a short bow, you're going to get your 2d6 plus your d10. Yeah. And oh, then yeah. you'll get the effects of your critical card. Uh, 10, 13, 18... Plus your critical card. Uh, target is not prone. Clumsy too. So your first strike lets off, and as the bear is beginning to rear its head up to scent and spot you, one of your arrows goes into its chest, but the other one hits perfectly right through its eye socket, dealing enough damage to fall it, fell it, and it drops down to the ground. Is it dead? It appears to be dead. Oh, okay. Wonderful. <laughs> okay, we didn't need to chase into the room. Great. Okay. Are we out of combat? You are out of combat. I'm gonna shoot oh my god. Time. Okay. It is. If it was in a dying condition, it is now in a dead condition. Okay. Uh, it. The. I guess they did a lot of damage on it, didn't they? I guess so. <laughs> oh, I guess now we pulled I... Alec. All the creatures we're friends with. <laughs> Whoops. You do have a bit of a menagerie, my lady. It's mine. <laughs> is it? <laughs> Truly. Ours. Mm-hmm. Taffy. Yeah. Freeze the surface of that pond. What? Okay. I don't trust it. I, fr- uh, I use chill touch to freeze the surface of the pond. Chill touch does negative damage, doesn't, just oh, fr- doesn't oh, do freezing. Oh, okay, then I'll do ray of frost. It's a cantrip, so it doesn't matter. But So as Taffy moves over and begins applying frost to the surface of the water... Bread, you notice that one of the boggards is still breathing, but is heavily unconscious. Uh, so before she finishes, or she does, the, actually, while I'm doing it, I'm just gonna cast Ray of Frost like a damage. Wait, but we could stabilize him and like interrogate him, mm. or we could just we keep. could just kill him. Does anybody speak? Whatever they speak, I assume they the other speak one spoke common something or other. There was one who was addressing you in common. I say we stabilize it, we interrogate it, and if it proves useless, we kill it then. Agreed. Stabilize a spell or a cantrip? So it is a spell, but it's a cantrip level spell. I don't think I think, it's, I think you can use medicine to stabilize. 
You can I'm, use medicine to stabilize. Um, Let me wait, stabilize. Wait, 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 wait. Tie it up first. Tie, I, I tied up. I think it. Okay. For me, it's level one. It might be. I got a twenty-six. Might be a primal. To, that might be why. A twenty-six to do. Oh that. yeah, it's a primal. So sure. twenty-six stabilizes it. But I don't have it prepared. Okay, it's okay. Oh, did we tie it up? Yes. Yeah. It is tied up and it is stable. Damos stabilizes him and then just starts smacking his cheek repeatedly. <laughs> Wake up. Who has intimidate? Stato does. Sit on the bear. What? Just sit on it. Just trust me. Okay. Makes you look threatening. Does it? I mean, it implies that you killed a bear. That just murdered. Stato's not going to sit on the bear, but she will lean against the bear. How about that? All right, that's fine. So, the creature begins to rouse. And it, its eyes begin to kind of go from this unfocused state and begins focusing on it. Who's the one who is immediately next to it? It'd be me because I'm smacking his cheek. <laughs> <laughs> I prepare acid it's splash in, ta- in case it does anything Slimy weird. Cheek. Ugh, is it sticky? Probably a little slimy, it, you know, like a amphibian. This one is very moist. Ugh. Well, we did word. pull out of the pond. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I've asked the splash prepared. Do you speak common? Common? Taldane, do you speak it? Uh, so she's just gonna try every language she has. Stato's gonna give a quick try in Infernal. Uh, it doesn't seem to recognize what you're saying in either Taldane or Infernal. But does it seem scared of the Infernal? No. Damn. So try Gnomish. No response yet. Sylvan. Draconic? You see its eyes open a little bit more. As you begin. Do you understand me? Draconic. It's a bit croaky, but it's like. Yes. Are you a part of the cult that's here? You see it looks slightly up and to the left. Uh, I would like to. I would like to. Uh, what is it? Not in. Uh, perception? Yep. Santa doesn't know what's going shit. on, but she's gonna shift into its view and just like flex. <laughs> uh, actually, can I do an intimidation? Do you have it trained? Are you an intimidating gnome? Uh, no, I don't have it trained. Okay, let's try deception myself. Well, what was your perception? Uh, four. <laughs> so, so actually, it was uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, because I have a six natural, and then I rolled a four. What was the DC on the lie? I mean, it looked pretty obvious based on what you were saying, but... It kind of sounds a little convincing. You're trying to talk through a second language, but it's body language, and the whole part of it has a symbol of the the hawk on its armor is a pretty good giveaway. Okay, I'm going to roll a diplomacy. No, I'm going to roll a deception. Okay. To tell it, listen, if you tell me everything you know, we're going to let you go. All right, give me a deception. Oh, that was a natural 20. So that is 28. You mean I can get out of here? Yes, if you tell me everything you know. Where is your leader? Who is your leader? Malaruk is the leader. He has many more cinder claws down below. We came from the glorious portal. And we will invade your lands and dig into your homes and they'll destroy all. Malarok will unleash the hawk, the glorious, glorious the hawk, and you won't be able to stop the cinder claws. But if you let me go, you may have a chance. <laughs> oh, I don't know if this thing's supposed to be on our plane. Is it laughing? Glorious it is nervous portal? laughter. There's a portal downstairs that you are coming through. Malarok is the master of the Malarok? portal. Malarok. Uh, okay. The vanguard of the cinder claws. It's powerful indeed. How many are there <coughs> are you? Many. We are but the first of the vanguard. How much and you is let the van- me go, right? Yeah, of course. After I ask all my questions, how many are in your current vanguard that are here? There are so many. So many I couldn't even count. Perception. <laughs> Eight. You believe he's telling the truth. And then we'll we'll create the tunnel and we'll get to that little town to the outside. <laughs> Do you know any other languages besides Draconic? Only the language of the chosen people of Dahak. <laughs> so Draconic. 
Yes. <laughs> Stano's gonna flex again. <laughs> Like, I don't know what's uh, going on. Okay, Flex. so I'm going to roll a perception Okay. Uh, to see approximately how much health he has left. He is at zero. He is at zero and stable. <clears throat> how much How much does he need to take to die? He is presently at a wounded one condition. So he needs to go to wounded three? Wounded four, or w- three dying or wounded. four. Dying four? You will let Rob go, yes? Oh, yes. Acid splash. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> All right, roll your hit. I mean, he's like right there. He has like a negative to that, right? He's prone. Yeah. God damn it. Well, landed flat, so 12 plus 8, so 20 to hit. 20 hits, and he is now having his skin burn. How okay. much damage do you do? Uh, so 4 plus 1 uh, splash at acid damage. And does that have any persistent damage? Yes. So the acid splashes and he immediately goes into shock and unconscious again, taking him from his wounded one condition down to an immediate dying two. Can I coup de gras him with my dagger? And as the persistent damage kicks over for the start of his turn. She doesn't like these cultists. He fails his save, thus dropping into dying four, fully expiring as the acid drips away and begins eating away at his eyes and his skull. Well, was it successful? Oh, yes. Oh, good. He that asked works. me to release him, so I did. From this plane? Yeah. Well, he didn't need to be on it. Okay, so, news, because you guys don't speak Draconic. So below us, there's another floor. Surprise. <laughs> um, They're trying to unleash the hawk into this world, which I don't think is actually all that big of a surprise. I think we knew that. But they're using a portal... That's downstairs. Portal. A glorious portal is what they called it. And teleporting troops into the castle. So, Calmont spoke about elf gates. Yep, I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. What the hell is an elf gate doing here and not in Kionan? I, I don't know. Mel. Oh, wait, what is it called again? Uh, Malector? Malarunk. No. No. She's, a, she's addressing Alec. Oh, Ma- Alec? Marlector. Marlector. Yes, my lady. Why would there be an elf portal here? I don't know. That's quite puzzling. Insight check. All right. Give me a perception. It couldn't be recent. Shit. God damn it. Keep Six. Going too for Eight. That. Sorry. How many people? How many people are there? Um, he said more than he can count, but he was pretty dumb, so I'm gonna say a few. A few at least, but I don't know how many. So tired of these fucking cultists. We need to collapse this building. No, what? what? No, we need to close the portal. No, do you know how useful a portal would be? Taffy, elves use them. That's about it. Do you realize how far and how wide we could explore the world if we had access? You don't know where the other end of that portal goes. Doesn't matter. It does. It could be extra planar. I don't know about you. I don't fancy going into another plane. But I can read arcane magic and understand what it's saying. So we should potentially... probably close it if things are coming through it. You know, so we don't get more frog things. If we can close it without destroying it, I agree. But if there's the only way to close it is to destroy it, I will not do that. Then we will. You're outnumbered on this one. Okay. I'm in agreement. I have far too much responsibility to be burying around other planes or dealing with it. How did they mention they were going to invade? Did they did they have a route to they the city? They said that or? they're building a tunnel to the city, but given that we know that there's already a tunnel to the city. And given that we know that they've not gotten past the undead. They don't know about it. They don't know about it. Oh, so they're just fucking stupid and useless. Uh, pretty much is my thought. So, we do have to clean out this infestation, and hopefully we can figure out a way to close the portal without destroying it, because I would really like to keep that open. And then eventually we'll find beds and sleep in them. Yeah. But now that we've cleared out the skeletal guards to the portal, or the way out, we really need to finish what we started. We also need to find out where that where that uh, tunnel ends. We know it ends in Breach Hill, but we don't know where. That's true, but... My concern is if we go out of that tunnel right now, they could find it. Fair. If we don't finish what we started here and clear out the cultists and close or do something with the portal, they're going to keep coming. 
So... So Alex speaks up. So how deep do you think this puddle goes? He begins poking a javelin down at it. What, what about the other body? Is it just floating there? It's <laughs> onto the Bless side, you. partially frozen in where you were putting your ray frost at it. Alec is poking down some of the unfrosted side. Only one way to find out. I doubt the monkeys were coming through here. Monkeys can swim. Well, you are the one in the most appropriate attire to dive in. Is that what you were volunteering for? Or maybe Wimble. Is he a swimmer? Demos, you swim. I do. do you have dark it looks so cold. It's we'll go on then. Quite chilly now. Don't be a coward. <sighs> okay. Demos is going to try to do well, that. Is what? he going to go full gear? Is he going to take like a shirt off or something? Oh, he's going to try. He's going to take his armor off because uh, he's in studded armor. <laughs> it's also going to be very dark. Yeah. Um, I believe I have light of some sort. Uh, I have a scroll. Hold, have on, hold on. Yeah, you've got light. Yeah. I've oh got, yeah, I can yeah, cast got, dancing lights, and that doesn't get smothered by water. He, 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 he's I've got, got light. light as a cantrip. That's right. cast it on Fair enough. Face or something. <laughs> <laughs> light. <laughs> okay, what do I need to roll to figure this one out? Give me a perception check. Twenty-six. So you jump in and realize that the the pool itself is only coming up to about waist deep where you're at. And as you begin uh, kind of footing around and you use your light to kind of shine and get some clarity because it's still really murky water, you actually see what appears to be a vial and potion in there. And as you pull those up, uh, Taffy can immediately recognize that you are holding a potion of invisibility. Oh, I don't like that. Oh. What about the vial? Uh, that is the it is a oh, okay. potion vial of, invis- of, invi- of invisibility. Do you share that that's invisibility? Yeah. Okay, Kazalyn gets immediately very paranoid. That is very concerning. It, Taffy. It doesn't bode well. Taffy, yes. will you do me a favor? Yes. Cast detect magic. So you sense an unknown magical presence coming from y'all's bags. Days of most villagers in Bericho begin at the first rays of dawn. Two pairs of feet in tiny thin shoes sleepily move out into the picket yard. They must tend to their chickens and pigs so that their mother can get a little bit of rest after closing up at her tavern. This morning they have a nice haul of eggs, maybe even enough for some breakfast instead of pickling them like usual. Hmm. The little girl, she smiles. The pig sow has rushed to her brother, nearly bowling him over into the mud. <laughs> but then a man grumbles from the other side of their fence. Walking up in stiff from sleeping under the tree just outside of their yard. The boy he tells the man to go home before the sun rises, else his mother won't serve him any drink once the sun sets. But once their chores are done, their small home welcomes them back in from the morning chill. The mother, already awake, the tavern owner, Roxy Den, is making them a simple breakfast. Her smile is warm, but even the children can see she has need of rest. But ever since their father, he died, they'd known their mother has taken on much to take care of them. Old Uncle Quintino, he stops by from time to time, saying he is to help. But Draxi always shoes him away. Sometimes, the mother, she gets so thin. She seems like she'll be taken away by a ghost of the winds. 
But after Roxy has performed her error this morning, the family, she can head on over to Le Mans Lament for several of her girls who help out that Sitavan stay there overnight. And Roxy always checks to make sure that they are okay. But then the children run off to play in the warming sun. But today, Roxy, she is determined to turn around her tavern business and hands each of her girls the clean, no uniform for the evening. And now, an hour, right before the sun is high, Roxy and her girls get to cleaning and preparing the starving for the next night. Because you see, last night was a good night. No broken chairs. No broken tables. Maybe a few mugs, but no major squabbles. Roxy even has the moment to watch as the girls work, each spinning and moving, cleaning and washing in their matching, gleaming uniform. And she hopes it will be more than just a single night before those who claim to be her regulars ruin such a pretty dress made by Mr. Fini. Roxy knows it will be just a bit more gold, and then her loan for Mr. Posandi, it will be paid in full. If only she can get more people into the tavern, maybe then her luck will turn around. But some problems, not even one of my buttons can solve. No, not all problems.